Hello everybody, welcome to Epic Future Space, and where the hell have I been? Let's start making videos again on this channel. Quick ones, short ones, whatever. We're just going to talk about all the stuff that I think is amazing. So let's start catching up in space for this channel and uh, get into it. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is a proposal that came out last month in February of 2017. And this is just a proposal, NASA and the US government hasn't signed off on this, but Sierra Nevada Corporation, who's building the Dream Chaser space plane, has proposed that they could send the space plane to do another service mission to the Hubble Space Telescope. Now this news story originally came out in the Wall Street Journal, and it's kind of unclear whether or not it was Sierra Nevada that first proposed this, or as the Wall Street Journal claims whether this is the Trump administration who is pushing this idea forward. And I would guess that it would be, you know, the NASA transition team in the Trump administration that is pushing this. But in either way, I still think it's a good idea. But does it make sense? There have been five repair missions that used the space shuttle to uh, service the Hubble Space Telescope. The last one was in 2009. And with that one, it's projected that the Hubble Space Telescope will still be able to operate really well up until 2020. And without some sort of reboost, it would re-enter the Earth's atmosphere sometime between 2030 and 2040. So, by setting up another mission, we could hopefully extend the lifetime, but I'm not sure that uh, the Dream Chaser space plane, without some sort of robotic arm or some sort of uh, grappling mechanism, would be able to reboost the uh, Hubble Space Telescope to a higher orbit. Now, the whole idea behind this proposal is kind of like an insurance policy in case something happens to the James Webb Space Telescope. And that's supposed to launch sometime next year in 2018. However, the James Webb Space Telescope is going to be going to a Lagrange point, uh, the, the one that's behind the moon or on the other side of the moon. So it's pretty far away and it's not designed to be serviceable. So if something were to go wrong or something breaks down on it and we had the means and the will to go and try to fix it, we might not even be able to. So now I really like this idea because not only are we able to get the most use that we possibly can out of Hubble, but it also is giving the dream chaser another purpose and kind of using it for its original purpose of sending up astronauts into Earth orbit. So I really like that this plan uh, even is being talked about, even if it's not official yet. But I also kind of have negative feelings towards the James Webb Space Telescope because it's cost us so much money. And the reason that it's cost so much is because of mismanagement and wasteful spending and the whole cost plus model of contracting, which I hate. I hate cost plus contracting so much. <laughs> I'm going to make another video talking about the whole uh, benefits, the pros and cons between cost plus and fixed price, but I like fixed price contracting way more. And part of my whole negativity towards James Webb is that it's cost us so much money that I would have loved to see just a part of it. Just 10% of the money that's gone towards James Webb could have gotten the commercial cargo and commercial crew programs years ahead of schedule. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, throwing money at a problem doesn't necessarily make things happen faster, but Speaking of that, and related to the whole Dream Chaser thing, uh, remember back in January where the Dream Chaser arrived at uh, Edwards Air Force Base in the Dryden, excuse me, Armstrong uh, Flight Research Center? Weren't tests supposed to start happening where they were going to do another drop test soon? What's, what's, what's going on with that? Now the reason why this test hasn't taken place yet is because when Dream Chaser arrived back in January, it was only partially assembled. It wasn't fully assembled yet. And the other pieces that have since been sent and arrived at Edwards Air Force Base are the wings that are going to be on the back of it, the tail fin, and a couple other pieces of hardware and some of the stuff for the inside of the cockpit for sensors and stuff like that. So they're working on integrating everything and getting it ready to go so that they can do this whole drop, glide, and landing test. Not sure when that's going to happen. All we can say is that it's going to happen soon, soonish. But uh, yeah, that's, I was wondering what the heck was taking so long since the vehicle had arrived in January. And if I'd have looked closely at these pictures, I would have noticed that there was a couple pieces missing. So, huh. 
But in any case, I'm always glad to see progress from Sierra Nevada, and this proposal is just really exciting, and I hope that this is something that happens. I mean, with this whole uh, commercial cargo program, they're definitely going to fly at least six times to the International Space Station with their cargo version. And then they are working with uh, Germany to do free-flying missions where they would have science payloads aboard. And then they also have gotten a contract from UNUSA, the United Nations Outer Space, the Office of Outer Space Affairs, has a contract that's going to be happening sometime after 2020 and probably 2021 to also have free flying experiments for countries that don't have space capabilities and wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to do that. So I'm really happy to see the United Nations getting a little bit more involved with stuff and to have that contract with Sierra Nevada. So if this happens and if they get this, uh, uh, up, this proposal to go to the Hubble Space Telescope for another service mission, that would just be great. And it would be another step in the direction of having the Dream Chaser in its original intended form of a crew vehicle. So even if they don't send up uh, astronauts to the International Space Station, there could be um, lots of cool things in the future for the Dream Chaser space plane. And that gets me really excited about it. All right, that's all I'm going to talk about for today, but there's been a lot of really cool stuff happening, and in the next couple of videos, I want to talk about the whole SpaceX announcement of uh, possibly sending some private tourists on an Apollo 8 style mission around the moon, Blue Origin with uh, their new animation for the new Glenn rocket, as well as their uh, kind of interesting proposal to have something called Blue Moon and have delivery services to the moon. So that would be really cool, and I want to talk about that in depth. But in any case, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to do the whole YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, let me know how I'm doing. And also, give me some suggestions. If there's anything in particular that you would like me to talk about, please let me know and I would be happy to get on board with that. For those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am just... It's people like you that give me faith in humanity. But if you can't support me through Patreon, that's okay. Just keep watching. Share me with your friends if you would like. And I just appreciate all the sort of input that you guys have. So thank you again for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, AKA Space Mike. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody. And don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.